I want to play a game. No, not that game. Goodness me. The game I want to play is a little less mm, uh, horrifying. In my game, two siblings are running around their home mucking about when suddenly one of them knocks the TV off its stand. It smashes on the ground and is broken beyond repair. At that moment, dad walks in. The kids now have a choice. They can either both admit fault, one can blame the other, or the other admits fault, or they can both blame each other. This kind of thing has happened before, so they know what's at stake. If they both blame each other, they both get in trouble and lose their iPads for two weeks. If they both accept responsibility, Dad will commend them for their honesty and they will only lose their iPads for one week. If one blames the other and the other confesses, the one who takes the blame will lose their iPad for three weeks and the other won't lose it at all. Dad's smart and he's taught his kids to be honest, so he always takes their first response. Time is running out. They need to answer soon or the punishments only get worse. What do the kids do? Do they dob in the other and be tiny little tattletales? Or do they stand firm and take the punishment together as brother and sister in arms against their parental overlords? Either way, there's no ice cream on the menu tonight, so they better do something quick. This problem, known as the prisoner's dilemma, is key to understanding what game theory is all about and how it affects you in your everyday life. The simple definition of game theory is the study of human conflict and cooperation within a competitive situation. In some respects, game theory is the science of strategy, or at least the optimal decision making of independent and competing actors in a strategic setting. The key pioneers of game theory were mathematicians John von Neumann and John Nash, as well as economist Oscar Morgenstern. Unfortunately, I don't have time to do a biography of each, but I'll give special mention to John Nash because he was played by totally Aussie and totally not Kiwi, Russell Crowe, in the film A Beautiful Mind. Nash developed the idea now known as the Nash Equilibrium. That is, a concept of game theory where the optimal outcome of a game is one where no player has an incentive to deviate from his chosen strategy after considering an opponent's choice. Overall, an individual can receive no incremental benefit from changing actions, assuming the other players remain constant in their strategies. In other words, you'd be dumb to change strategies. If we look at the example from the intro, we can see that if both children blame each other, this strategic outcome represents Nash equilibrium. If both children choose to blame at first, then one confesses later, they would just be ensuring a worse punishment for themselves. As such, it would be pretty dumb. Assuming the other doesn't change strategies, of course. Then again, there's a reason we don't let kids drive cars. What's that supposed to mean, Maddie? It's because they often don't make smart decisions, Short Bus. Oh, that's not very nice. Hey, Short Bus, do you know who ate all the leftover pizza this morning? I was saving that for my lunch. It was next the pig, I swear. She says you ate it. Look over there, it's a flying donut! What? <laughs> Short bus. We can apply game theory to a variety of competitive and cooperative environments. A simple example is that of an industry duopoly. In this example, there are two competing businesses. Both sell identical products and want to maximize their own profits. If they both set high prices, they both make a profit of $100 each. If they both set low prices, they make a profit of $75 each. However, if one sets high prices while one sets low prices, the business with the low prices makes $125 while the high price business only makes $50. Clearly, it's better overall if they both keep their prices high, but the incentive to cheat is often all too tempting. They may try to reach an agreement, but many nations have anti-collusion laws designed specifically to stop this from happening. It's better for the general public to have lower prices after all. At any rate, if a market is competitive, there is no need for government controls of this kind. The more businesses competing in a market, the lower prices tend to be. 
It's usually a lot better for the state to keep barriers to entry as low as possible and let the market sort the rest out. We can apply the ideas of game theory to things like public goods, the tragedy of the commons, and even biology. In his documentary, Nice Guys Finish First, Richard Dawkins discusses the evolution of cooperation. He notes some interesting research on optimal long-term strategies in cooperative and competitive environments. A computer tested these different strategies by awarding points based on the ideas we've talked about. What's needed is a pre-planned system for getting cooperation going and maximizing winnings. Now, is there any way we can work out in advance what the best strategy is? Computers can be programmed to do anything you like. And that includes playing the game of Prisoner's Dilemma. All you have to do is to feed in the right program. One program for playing the game, another program for playing the game, and they can play against each other. But that's just two programs. We need to increase the number of programs that we play against each other in order to find which is the one that will succeed best against all comers. And that was the idea that occurred to an American political scientist Robert Axelrod. He got altogether 14 entrants, all sent to him as computer software. This one was especially interesting to me, Friedman. It was just like my grudger. Cooperative to start off with, but a permanent retaliator once cheated against. And the simplest program of all, tit for tat. It started with a nice cooperative move and thereafter simply copied what its opponent's last move was, playing a C for a C and a D for a D. Nice means never the first to defect. The computer played them all off against each other. When the results came out, he got a surprise. Tit for tat, the simplest program, had proved the best. So the optimal strategy based on this research is to cooperate at first, then simply match what the other individual does from then on. It makes sense, but there's a better strategy modified tit-for-tat. This is where the tit-for-tat strategy doesn't retaliate all the time, just most of the time in order to stop echo effects associated with some other strategies. Put into practice, it means you always look to cooperate at first, but if at any given point someone misbehaves, you tell them it's unacceptable and you forgive them if they are remorseful. It makes sense. Sometimes people just make mistakes and you need to give them another chance. Sometimes they're just testing you as well. Forgiveness can forge strong relationships, but this video isn't about how to be a good person. Well, in some ways I guess it is. You know what I mean. This video is about economics. But economics is just a study of how people choose to allocate scarce resources, isn't it? Um, yeah, th that's right. And relationships or time spent with people are scarce resources, aren't they? Yeah, well done, short bus. I think you've got this one. Hey, that's my lunch! <laughs> Good one, Nix. <sighs> Always thinking about food. Anyway, game theory is an amazing discovery of economics and mathematics. It crosses so many fields and even gives us a strategy for conducting ourselves in everyday life to maximum benefit. The meek shall inherit the earth, as one once said. But it's important to remember that in this context, the term meek means strength under control and humility. It means you should curb the desire to fight your way out of problems, but retain the ability to do so if needed. What game theory and subsequent research tells us is we should always seek to cooperate, but you also need to stand up for yourself. Would any decent self-help guru tell you this was bad advice? How about a good friend? When people cooperate voluntarily, good things happen. This is the foundation of a true free market capitalist society and is the reason the West is so great. When we lie, cheat and steal, we do get an awesome tool song, but we also get mistrust and the destruction of society if it happens too much. Call it out when you see it, forgive those who ask for forgiveness and never, ever, ever Turn your back on a hungry pig. Alright, who broke the TV? It was Stato! Yeah, Stato did it! Uh, Alright, come here boy! <laughs> <laughs> 
I told you not to touch anything in the house. Now get outside and guard the fence like you're supposed to. <laughs> Dumb dog. Hi hey everyone, thank you so much for watching my video as always. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and a comment and all that kind of thing. Click the subscribe button and the bell if you want to be notified of future uploads. If you hated the video, please do troll me in the comments. I love a good troll. They're my favourite things in the world. Um, check out our live streams on Monday nights. That's 9 o'clock to 9.30 Monday nights, Australian Eastern Time. Whether it's Daylight Saving or Standard, obviously it changes depending on the time of the year. Again, thank you so much for watching the video. Really hope you're enjoying my content and I'll see you when I see ya.